Good evening, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. And I um, wanted to share with you some information, or, or really from this scripture here in Joel. A friend of mine had reached out to me about Joel. And uh, because there were, they were in a little bit of a discussion with some folks on Facebook. And, and granted, if you read it for face value, uh, it, it does appear that it may, in reality, be a future fulfillment for Israel. Uh, for the return of Judah, some people might interpret Jerusalem as the house of Israel. Uh, even though we know that in the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 36, uh, and I could pull that up for you just so you know that right off, that the fulfillment of the children of Israel returning home has certainly already taken place. And uh, it's, it's something that is quoted by Peter in Acts chapter 2, written by Paul, when he says down here in verse 36, Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. So we know the house of Israel had come home. And not only the house of Israel, but they also brought with them Gentile proselytes with them. From every nation under heaven, by the way. That's something that's really important to remember because when we look at Acts chapter 2, and we have all these languages, the Perithians, the Medes, the Elamites, dwellers of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia, uh, Pamphylia, Egypt, parts of Libya, about Cyrene, strangers, Romes, Jews, and proselytes. Cretes, Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. You see, on the day of Pentecost, not only was the house of Judah there, but the house of Israel was there. And we had a sizable Gentile presence from every nation under heaven. As we think about this for a moment, though, I want you to look at this scripture because it's often, I really believe, mistranslated. In the traditional translation of Joel chapter 3, and this is the King James Version translation of that, For behold, in those days and that time, when I shall bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, and I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat, I will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. And they have cast lots for my people and have given a boy for a harlot and sold a girl for wine that they might drink. Yea, and what have you to do with me, O Tyre and Zidon, and all the coast of Palestine? Will you render me recompense? And if you recompense me swiftly and speedily, will I return you recompense upon your own head? Because you have taken my silver and gold, and my gold, excuse me, and have carried it into your temples and my goodly and pleasant things. It does look like that it's still something that would be fulfilled, even though this is back during the time when Joel wrote it, during the time of the Babylonian captivity. You know, what's interesting is even in English, they do have that word right there, captivity. And nobody seems to really think about that word. What is that word in the Hebrew language? It's actually Shavut. And Shavut actually means a prisoner. I wanted to take and share with you because as I looked at this in light of the friend that was asking me, I decided to really just break down what's actually said there. How's it translated? Because in reality here, it has to be during the Babylonian captivity because if it's a prisoner, Judah and Jerusalem, it could not be after the fall of Israel during Roman times. Oh, sure, some may have been taken prisoner, but they did not remain prisoners. And not only did they not remain prisoners, 
they never returned to the land. And there were some Jews that still remained there in the land as well as the house of Israel, even after the Roman conquest. But they were never prisoners. So it couldn't be talking about during that period. And if that be the case, then maybe we should look at the rest of the way it's translated. And that's exactly what I've done. I want to share with you my own thoughts on how to translate it and looking at it carefully as we go. So we would have, for behold, those days and at this time, which will return. Ashar, Ashuv, Ashuv is and they will return et Shabbat, et Shabbat, the prisoners, and they will return the prisoners, Judah and Jerusalem. If you look at the next word here in verse 2, Vekeposti, the first letter in that word, the letter Vav, is the word and. So, technically, we shouldn't even have a period over here after Jerusalem. It should read as a continuation. It should be Ashar Ashuv Ed Shabbat Yehuda Ve Yerushalayim Ve Kabatzti Ed Kol Hagoim. That would be more proper. Let's look at the way. It sounds in English if you read it the right way. Which will return the prisoners, Judah and Jerusalem, and will gather all the Gentiles and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat. The word kibbutz you may be familiar with, a community. It's the word communal, a gathering. When we look at this word here, vekabutsti, it's more of like a mother gathering together her children. Not someone being gathered together to go and have them all judged and killed. No. Rather, the prisoners are being returned, and the prisoners were Judah and Jerusalem from Babylonian captivity. And it says, and he will gather all the Gentiles and bring them down. Their horudatim al ami, excuse me, al imach. He will bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat. And then it, the next verbiage here, which would be right here, they translate this, and I will enter into judgment with them there. But you could also translate this, and I was judged with them there. Now it seems to be more prophetic. Not only is it prophetic, Joel prophesying of the return of the prisoners, the captives of Judah and Jerusalem from Babylonian captivity, but also gathering together all the Gentiles. Remember, it wasn't just Judah and Jerusalem taken into captivity. You remember that it was also, according to the Cyrus Cylinder, he sent back all the peoples to their lands. And it just so happened there were Gentiles of all different types of nations that were sent there to Jerusalem. But then again, we could look at Acts and see that the fulfilling of the fact that the house of Israel had come, come home and they brought with them proselytes, each one from their own nations. So think about that. So we see it more prophetic, so it would make sense as we look at this, to actually translate it, and I was judged with them there upon my people.
my heritage, Israel, upon my people. I was judged with them there and upon my people. And my, literally the word is inheritance right there. Ve nechalati, my inheritance, Israel, which they scattered which they scattered with the Gentiles. Ve'et arzi chaliku, and they, and my land they divided. They scattered with the Gentiles, big going. Now you could put it in, in, in amongst the Gentiles. They scatter them in amongst the Gentiles or with the Gentiles. Because truly, when they came in from the Babylonian kingdom, they took both Jew and Gentile with them. When we see in Ezra, they had intermingled amongst the people. It was the Hittites, Perizzites, Jebusites, Ammonites, etc. Remember that? So, but it's interesting because he says, I will enter into judgment with them there upon my people, my inheritance, Israel. And that clearly is a reference, a prophecy of Jesus Christ who would end up being judged by the Pharisees themselves. And that's what would give him his inheritance. And then it continues on into the prophecy. I think it's something worth considering. I find it fascinating. And I hope you do as well. God lays it on your heart to support the work we do. We greatly appreciate it. Thank you for listening. My voice a little under the weather right now. Thank you for listening, though. And also, I'll put in the link for you guys below. Tomorrow, we're doing a Zoom meeting with Mia and Richard Finnegan. Uh, any of you are welcome to come if you would like. Uh, they will be talking about the LifeWave uh, products and the business itself, how this actually works as a business. So if you're interested in that, you're welcome to come, especially those of our friends that, uh, that already attend a lot of the Zoom meetings there. This is a great way to get involved. Uh, you'll learn a lot more than what we can teach you, uh, although myself and my wife will be there as well. Uh, thank you. I'm Steve Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live, and have a great night.